Meet Leonardo Cianciolli, a name forever etched in the annals of horror as the soap maker of Correggio. Her chilling legacy revolves around luring unsuspecting women into her home, a place where their lives would be brutally sacrificed. But before she gained notoriety as this sinister figure, Leonardo was a doting Italian mother with an extraordinary motive. Her tale unfurls at the turn of the 20th century, a period marked by heartache. Having faced 17 pregnancies, with three ending in miscarriages, and 10 children tragically dying young, Leonardo's determination to protect her remaining four children knew no bounds. However, the stage was set for her transformation. In 1939, her son Giuseppe Pansardi, the eldest and dearest, declared his intention to join the Italian army amidst World War II. The convergence of this news with her deeply ingrained superstitions would propel Leonardo into a chilling narrative that would forever stain history's pages. Born on April 18, 1894, in the picturesque southern Italian town of Montella, where tragedy seemed woven into the fabric of her life. She attempted suicide twice before she became an adult. When she married registry clerk Raphael Pensardi in 1917, Kiansuli claimed her mother cursed her because she disapproved of the marriage. In 1927, Kiansuli was imprisoned for fraud. Upon her release, she and her family moved from Potenza to Lacedonia, not too far from her childhood home. On July 23, 1930, the Irpania earthquake struck. It would later be categorized as one of the most destructive earthquakes in Italian history. Canciali was one of the thousands who lost their homes in the disaster. Between her suicide attempts, her mother's alleged curse, and her various miscarriages, Leonardo Chiansuli realized that her life, to put it bluntly, sucked. So she went to see a fortune teller for some insight. The fortune teller, a traveling Romani woman, did nothing to quell her fears. In your right hand, I see prison, the fortune teller told her. In your left, a criminal asylum. In modern times, we recognize that a woman can experience depression and anxiety, even after a single miscarriage, let alone three. Consider also the additional burden of losing ten children who were born. If Leonardo Chiancioli were alive today, it's probable she would receive a diagnosis of clinical depression, be recommended for therapy, and prescribed medication. But in the 1930s, while living in a small province nestled in the Mates and Picentini Mountains in southern Italy, Leonardo Chiansuli resorted to superstition and paranoia. As it turns out, there is some evidence to suggest that Chiansuli's superstitious beliefs were a sign of deep-seated anxiety and depression. Today, many clinical psychologists believe that superstitions are born out of a fractured mind's attempts to make sense of the nonsensical. But of course, it's impossible to know whether modern medical treatment could have prevented what happened next. A gruesome series of murders. Dwelling on her mother's alleged curse and the Romani fortune teller's prediction, Leonardo Chiansuli became deeply superstitious. When her son Giuseppe told her in late 1939 that he was going to join the Italian army, Chiansuli turned to the one thing that she believed would keep him safe human sacrifice. It's unclear where Chiancioli got her idea to sacrifice humans in order to save her son from dying in World War II. The Roman Catholicism prevalent in Italy during Chiancioli's time forbade human sacrifice as an abomination before God. Additionally, there's no known Romani belief or superstition that embraces human sacrifice. But regardless of where she got her idea, Leonardo Chiansoli would go on to murder three women before she was caught. Leonardo Chiansoli's first victim was a local spinster woman named Faustina Setti. Inviting Setti to her home under the guise of setting her up with a husband in 1939, Chiansoli instructed her to write letters to her family members, 
telling them that she would be visiting the man abroad. But Kyan Seely drugged Seti with spiked wine before murdering her with an axe. Next, she cut Seti into nine pieces and gathered her blood into a basin. In her official statement, after her arrest, she described the things she did next. I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap, and stirred the whole mixture until the pieces dissolved in a thick, dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied in a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk, and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine, kneading all the ingredients together. I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. Cancielli also reportedly took Seti's life savings of 30,000 Italian lire, the equivalent of $17.94, and when adjusted for 2020 inflation, about $332, which she had received as payment for setting Seti up with a husband. On September 5, 1940, Cancielli found another victim named Francesca Soavi. As with Seti, Kiansa Lee convinced Soavi that she had organized a teaching job for her abroad and made her write letters to her friends detailing her trip. And, as she had with Seti, she fed her drugged wine, killed her with an axe, baked her into tea cakes, and stole her money. Her third victim, however, would be her last one. Virginia Cassiopo was a noted soprano who once sang at the famed La Scala Opera House in Milan. Chiancielli had promised her a job working with an impresario in Florence, which prompted Cassiapo to pay her a visit on September 30, 1940. As with her previous two victims, Chiancielli fed Cassiapo spiked wine and killed her with an axe. This time, however, instead of only baking her body into tea cakes and feeding them to her neighbors, Chiancielli also melted her flesh down and turned it into soap. Leonardo recalled the events as such. She ended up in the pot like the other two, her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne. And after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet. Although Leonardo Chiancelli thought she had committed the perfect murders, she could not have been more wrong. Unlike her first two victims who had few concerned relatives, Cassiopo had a very worried sister-in-law. She didn't believe Cassiopo's letters detailing her quick departure, and had, in fact, seen her entering Chiancelli's home the night she had left. Almost immediately, she reported her sister's disappearance to the Reggio Emilia police who quickly investigated Kiansuli. At first, Leonardo Kiansuli defended herself. It was only when the police shifted the blame toward her beloved son Giuseppe that she finally broke down and admitted to everything. Kiansuli's trial lasted only a few days. She was found guilty of her crimes and granted a 33-year sentence that echoed the Romani woman's prophecy with eerie accuracy. 30 years in a prison, and three years in a criminal asylum. On October 15, 1970, Leonardo Chiancelli died of cerebral apoplexy, a type of hemorrhage, while she was still in the asylum. She was 79 years old. Her body was returned to her family for burial, but her murder weapons, including the pot that her victims were boiled in, were donated to the Criminology Museum in Rome. To this day, museum visitors can see her collection of axes and peer inside the vat that she used to boil human beings. But the story doesn't end there. In 1979, Lina Wertemlier, best known for her work on the infamous Italian film The Seduction of Mimi, produced the play called Love and Magic in Mama's Kitchen, which was based on the life of Leonardo Chiancielli for the Spolito Festival. And in 1983, Love and Magic in Mama's Kitchen began a Broadway run, bringing Leonardo Chiancelli from the secluded hills of Avellino 
to the Great White Way. As we conclude this unsettling tale of Leonardo Chiansoli's heinous crimes, our hearts go out to the victims who fell prey to these tragic events. It's a grim reminder of the darkness that can reside in the human psyche. Let's remember those affected and continue exploring the mysterious and eerie corners of history together. Stay tuned for more intriguing narratives.